Västvåtning Slav TV. As we all know by now, so-called no-go zones in Sweden are in fact a real thing. This has been proven time and time again by various reporters and local authorities who have had very unpleasant and at times very violent encounters with the citizens of these majority Muslim enclaves. In 2015, the Swedish police released a report describing 53 districts throughout the country as vulnerable and listed 15 as especially vulnerable. Vulnerable areas are described as having high rates of crime and poverty, where police face unique challenges and have to adapt their approach. These neighborhoods may also host violent religious extremism and locals who don't report crime to police for fear of retribution. A newly released report by the newspaper DN has just revealed that eight more areas have been added to the list of especially vulnerable districts for a new total of 23 no-go zones in Sweden. Linda Staff, who runs the National Police NAO's intelligence department, advised the newspaper that these areas should have been classified as especially vulnerable back in 2015, but that police had not collected enough information at the time to properly assess the situation there. This comes as no surprise, considering that Swedish police largely rejected the term no-go zones when it first started being used widely by Swedish colonists nearly two years ago. Swedish police heads have recently requested for more financial resources and for more staff in order to deal with the growing problem. The president of Sweden's ambulance union has also called for enhanced security for his personnel when working in no-go zones, saying that the first responders need special military-grade equipment to withstand the dangers of the mainly migrant-populated areas. In early April, the government-owned postal Post Nord had also halted mail delivery to some addresses near the troubled Stockholm suburb of Rinkeby, where large-scale riots had taken place earlier this year. <laughs> Talk about being progressive and free when you can't even freely walk into an area of your own country without risking your life. The gang's attention turns when a local intervenes and drives his mobility scooter into the most violent attacker. Along with the number of no-go zones, Sweden is also expected to witness a sharp increase in the amount of rapes this summer. Last year, the number of reported sexual assaults at Swedish summer festivals increased by an astounding 1,000%. This year, Sweden seems to be keeping up with last year's record pace, as the number of police reports at the Grona Lund Amusement Park in Stockholm has already risen fourfold. In 2016, a wide range of sexual offenses, including molestation and rape, were reported at various summer festivals across Sweden. According to the Swedish newspaper Expressen, the number of reported sexual assaults increased by a mind-blowing 1,000%, with the newspaper predicting still more cases this year. Last year, only a single case of abuse was reported at the Grona Lund Amusement Park in Stockholm, but this year already four notifications have been received, despite the fact that the park only opened in April. To add insult to injury, a care center for rape victims in Stockholm, which received about 140 women annually, is being shut down and reopened to treat immigrants suffering from war memories and PTSD. Maria Hagerstrand of Stockholm City's Council advised the press that these changes in the clinic services were owed to major migrant flows and the need to help our future generations of migrants. In this area, there is a lot of police fishing. That you ring in an alarm for to get the police in the area, and then you lie in the back and throw stones. Why is that? You are disappointed. As Sweden continues to battle with expanding no-go zones and increasing sexual assaults and rape, it remains to be seen how long Swedish politicians will sit back and turn a blind eye to these rapidly growing problems. While the mainstream media continues to neglect these important issues, it is now more important than ever to shed light on these stories as the clock continues to tick down for Sweden and much of Western Europe as well.